Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad <coughs> wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatif Allah continue on in our revision of the ahadith of tahara of purification in the book uh, Umda, Umda al-Ahkam we reach the fourth hadith an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna rasulullahi anna rasulullahi anna rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqali idha tawadda ahadakum فَلْيَجَلْ فِي أَنْفِهِ مَا إِنْ تُمْلَّ يَسْتَنْتِرْ وَمَنْ يَسْتَجْمِرَ فِلْيُطِرْ وَإِذَا اسْتَيْكَدَ أَحَدَكُمْ مِنْ نَوْمِهِ فَلْيَغْسِلْ يَدَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُدْخِلُهُمَا فِي الْإِنَاءِ ثَلَاثٍ فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَدْرِ أَيْنَ بَاتَتْ يَدُهُ وَفِي لَفْلِ مُسْلِمْ فَلْيَسْتَنْشِقْ بِمَنْ خِرَيْهِ مِنْ الْمَاءِ وَفِي لَفْلِ مَنْ ت in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, if one of you uh, makes wudu, then he should uh, take water into his, his nose and he should blow it out. And whoever makes istijmar. Istijmar meaning uses stones to clean their his or her private parts uh, instead of water. Uh, then they, it should be an odd number. Uh, and if one of you wakes from, uh, from their sleep, then they should wash their hands before they enter it into the water bucket, the water vessel, uh, three times. For verily, one of you does not know where their hands have been when they were sleeping. And in another uh, narration, which is in Sahih Muslim, uh, that they should uh, suck in the water into their nose, uh, into their nostrils uh, with water. And in another narration, that whoever makes wudu, then they should blow the water out. So in this uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, these hadith also in the bab of tahara, in purification, and these hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam are hadith which illustrate for us how to make wudu. And they illustrate for us some very important things. So some of the uh, important things that require explanation in this particular hadith is this hadith uh, contains three things as Sheikh uh, Barak mentions half of the Allah Ta'ala. He says first, Al-Amr bi istinshaq wa istintar fil wudu. He said that this hadith contains three things and one of those things is the command from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam to take water in the nose and blow it out in wudu. That this is a part of wudu that a person should do. This is a part of uh, cleaning the, of, of, uh, you know, washing, included in washing the face, included in washing the face and, and taking in water into the mouth. Uh, he also mentions the second, uh, thing in which this hadith, uh, entails, or the second command, which, uh, this hadith cont- uh, entails is the command to use an odd number when making a stijmar. When a person is cleaning oneself with rocks, for example, me, myself, I'm an avid hiker, I like to go to the mountains, so sometimes if I have no water, then I will make a stijmar. And if I cannot find rocks, I may use leaves, a karmakum Allah, or whatever. It should be wither. It should be an odd number. And that odd number should be, al-aqal, the least amount should be three. And this is in accordance with this uh, hadith. And the third command, which is in this contained in this hadith, is the prohibition to place one's hands in the water vessel in which they are going to uh, uh, make wudu from when they have just when they have woken up from their sleep. And some of the ulama they mentioned that the term batet. That was mentioned in the hadith because the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, With the stake of the ahadakum bin nomihi, 
فليغسل يده قبل أن يرخلهما في الإناء ثلاث فإن أحدكم لا يدري أين باتت يده البات as some of the ulama they mention البات this is only the during the night so some of them they say that this is you know for sleep at night that during the day that this is not inclusive of that because in the night you really you know probably taking a long sleep and you really don't know where your hands have been where your hands you know especially if you're uh you know most people are not wearing a lot of clothes when they're sleeping so then therefore akramakumallah then you may uh you know touch your private parts and so on and so forth and even to the extent of depending on a person's hygiene having the jasa and stuff like this and that could then in turn if you don't wash your hands and especially for those uh, because at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam obviously they didn't have sinks and running water so they used water containers and buckets if you will or some sort of things that held uh, water and you know would use uh, and if it's a larger container you're not probably you're not pouring it but instead you're probably dipping your hands in there to wash your hands so the fact that you're using a bucket or something like this and you're washing your hands uh, this is even more so uh, has its uh, its relevance of washing the hands first and or outside of the bucket uh, before dipping your hands in to make uh, wudu. The fawaid, or some of the benefits of this hadith, is this hadith illustrates, as Sheikh uh, Barak mentions, the obligation to make istanshaq wal istanthar, to suck in water into the nasal and blow it out for wudu. And also, this hadith, another fa'ida of this hadith or benefit of this hadith is that it is legislated to make istijmar. This hadith illustrates the mashru'iyat al-istijmar. The legislated, that istijmar is legislated, that it is something which uh, is from the sharia and it is uh, something which is allowable. And some of the, the ulama, they mentioned that the istijmar the, the combination of using istijmar, you know, using stones and water is the best tahara. Not just water, but using water and uh, stones. And still other ulama, they mention that whatever is in place takes the place of those stones. So it's not restricted to just stones. And that's why I said a chronicle of law, sometimes you might be out in the woods, you might be camping, you might be doing whatever, and you might need leaves. You might not have stones. There might be no stones in the place you are, and you may have to use leaves, you may have to use uh, tree bark, whatever, and you may have to do whatever you need to do to cleanse yourself. And so, uh, and so for this reason, those scholars that hold this view uh, say that, you know, using the tissue paper and Kleenex and stuff like this, along with water, you know, wetting it and stuff like this, a karmical law that this is uh, a mashru and this is permissible and this is the best pahara is that combination of the both. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is the obligation to make witter when making a stijmar. So if you, and the least amount is that it should be thalatha, uh, three, and this came in Sahih Muslim in a hadith uh, in which the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, prohibited uh, making the istinja with uh, less than three rocks. So letting us know that we, it, uh, the witr, this, this, um, this odd number should be no less than three. So if it's three, and if you do more than three, then five and if more than that seven if more than that nine and so on and so forth whatever it takes to clean you and remove the najasa and najasa and i want to mention another point a karmical law and this is not for the sake of being graphic but some people because they've suffered from waswas -was, or they suffer from other things will say you know i can't get all the uh the filth a karmical law you know that for example going in depth, so to speak, that this is not necessary. You want to get what's external and what is uh, apparent, you know, to get that as clean as possible and use those stones in the water or, or you know, whatever you have in water, tissue, paper, and water. 
Uh, moving on to the next hadith on Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'anu wa na Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yibolanna la yibolanna ahadakum fil ma'i ya daim aladhi la yajri thumma la yagtasul fi wali muslim la yagtasul ahadakum fil ma'i ya daim wa huwa junub uh, in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam another hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen fi hadith Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'anu he said that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that one of you should not urinate in water which is stagnant. And then the Prophet ﷺ, Fessar had it, which does not move, and then make a guzzle, you know, to, to take a bath in it. And in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said, do not uh, bathe, uh, one of you should not bathe in water which is stagnant, and he is junub. Okay, so that it's mash mashrut, that there's a shart, there's a condition there that he is junub. Doesn't mean you can't take a bath, doesn't mean you can't, even if you need to, if you go and make wudu in a pond, or you jump in the pond, or whatever, make ghusl. But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, la yaktasal ahadukum fil ma'iya daim uhu junub, that one of you should not make ghusl in a uh, water, in stagnant water, and you are junub, so you should not. Use that to rafa al hadith al akbar, you know, for example, in a pond or some stagnant body of water. Uh, and there's many uh, details with this hadith, but we'll just try to suffice with just a couple of benefits. In this hadith, one of the uh, important uh, benefits of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the impermissibility of urinating in. Uh, uh, stagnant water that this is impermissible to to do that because someone may use that uh, water and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's the illa that's the reason or that's some of the hikmah behind it that the ulama have deduced but what we have is a strict prohibition from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam who said la yibalanna ahadaku that uh, one of you should not urinate in ma a dime in, in in stagnant water. Uh, and then he f he explained what stagnant water means, la uh, yajri, aladi la yajri, that which does not move, thuma uh, min, and then make ghusl from. And the reason, as the ulama mentions, for example, if you don't even have a large body of water, and you urinate in it, okay, more than likely it's going to have an effect in there. And to say if someone wants to come and make wudu after that, well, obviously they cannot, uh, if that has changed one of the characteristics of the water and uh, many of the ulama mentioned that if it's a qalil min al ma that it's if, if it's a little amount of water that even if it doesn't change the smell or the taste just the fact that it's a small body of water uh, then you cannot and someone is urinated and put najasa in it then you cannot uh, use that and this is what some of the ulama mentioned some they say no it's restricted to those osaf which comes in a hadith which i believe is not a sound hadith but this is the the evidence for some and uh i'm inclined to take that cold because there's other adilla but that as long as it doesn't change that the ibra is changing the water meaning if someone uh, if some urine drops in a, a bucket of water that you have, someone splashes in the water that you make wudu and ghusl is near that toilet. And some drops of urine splash in there. As long as it doesn't change the smell or the taste or the color of the water, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and then it's permissible to use. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ta'ala. Uh, another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith also prohibits making, uh, urinating, and uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in stagnant water, and then making uh in it and that goes from Baba Ola you know Min Min Bab Min Babi Ola Min Babi Min Bab Ola <laughs> that this is a uh something which is known um uh, should be known by necessity that uh that the fact you know if it's prohibited to urinate in the in the stagnant water then also not making wudu or trying to purify yourself from it. And, of course, it goes back to the hadith 
fi mai aladi la yajri thumma yagtasal minhu. So the Prophet ﷺ prohibited making uh, uh, ghusl from stagnant water which has been uh, urinated in. And they are, yeah, and again, this is ghusl. This is uh, someone uh, who is. Uh, who is uh, has sexual impurities? You know the major hadith. Uh, another important point with regards to this uh, hadith uh, is it shows the that the Sharia is concerned with uh, purity and purification, and that this is something which is very important. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassallallahu wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wasallam.